Today in Crazy Performance Repair, we're going to go ahead and do a torque tube upgrade where we take and get rid of the rubber bushings that are typically in there, replace it with a solid drive shaft, no rubber bushings, no bushings at all. It will be just the shaft, and then we're going to replace all the bearings as well. So be sure to stay tuned. Today we are upgrading this torque tube dry shaft situation because the customer's complaint is that he feels like there's something wrong, like as far as he described it, it feels like it's loose, like maybe there's a bushing going bad. Now keep in mind, this is in a car that makes well north of 900 wheel, probably closer to a little over a thousand wheel. Uh, we have yet to get it on the dyno, but this is a Z06 with a Novi 2200 that's pushing a considerable amount of boost on the LS7 that has a ERL block. If you want to know how to get this thing out of the car, be sure to click the video link above. I will go ahead and throw a link up there. Let's go ahead and get to how to actually replace it once it's out. So the first thing you're going to need is a snap ring pliers. I have a actual needle nose. I custom made this. You should have a really large snap ring pliers to do it properly. Uh, it has a huge snap ring inside this thing. So if you look at this needle nose, you can see I got a little bit of a goofy grind on the very point of it. And I use that to get a good bite on the snap ring that's inside here. If you look in here, you can see there's a giant snap ring right here. And that's the snap ring I'm going to go ahead and get out. Now, I won't be able to bring you guys close because the camera will be in my way, but I'll go ahead and undo the snap ring. I'll just show you quick what I'm doing. I'm just taking this pliers, putting it in there, and pulling the snap ring. It is usually quite difficult. So here's the snap ring. Now, it's hard to see, so I'm not going to show it. I'm just going to describe it. But the snap ring is direction specific in that if you put it in this way, it's correct. This way, it's backwards as far as front to back. There is a front to back. And how you know that is you can feel a taper on the edge of this thing. So there's like a, a kind of an angled edge on one side and the other side is flat. You want the angled edge facing the outside. And what that does is when it snaps into place, it pushes everything in and holds it in a little bit tighter. Once you have that snap ring out, you can go to the other end with a rubber mallet and hit at the input shaft. Then you can come back here and pull everything out. Now I'm going to go ahead and inspect this once. Okay, this one the bushing is not torn. It does have a little bit of wear indication on here that maybe it was rubbing on the drive shaft or the inside of the torque tube, maybe, but I'm not totally positive. That could have just been from me pulling it out. I'll have to look inside there when I get a second. Bearings all actually feel good. I do not see any tearing on here. so. The customer may have been feeling something else, but we are still going to do the upgrade because it is needed for this car or highly recommended at bare minimum for this car. Something else of note. So this guy right here, this little plastic ring, if your drive shaft is off balance, you'll know it because this plastic ring will have a melted section. I had it on a previous video. Okay, so this one, it was hitting just a little bit, real small amount right here, and that's it. It really wasn't hitting much. So I don't think this one's out of balance much, but obviously we're still going to replace it. it is what it is. I'll uh, end up keeping that in case somebody else needs a new drive shaft. So you'll notice I spent a little bit of time here just looking in the, the torque tube, and all I'm doing is I'm just checking for any kind of wear or damage or anything of that nature that may be alarming, and I don't see anything, so we're good to go there. Now, we have to remove bolts, but we don't even have to remove these technically. What we can do is just pull these ones off, which are the ones that go to this flange, because that flange is what's going to go directly to this drive shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this set of bolts. There's three on each side that need to be pulled out. Now, I suppose for the reason of not coming out, those bolts are usually extremely tight. And they have a Loctite on them typically. And they're so tight that even this impact gun struggles to get them loose. But it's an 1100 foot pound impact uh, for breakaway torque. And I have an air compressor that's at a, almost 150 PSI right now. So we'll see how well it takes it loose. My electric impact that's rated for 1,100 foot-pounds doesn't even come close usually. So that's why I went straight to the air impact. And then to top it off, this thing is at a goofy angle. So I'm going to have to get something different on it. That's not going to work. I've never used the wobble on here because 
obvious reasons, it's probably a bit sketchy and most likely going to break. But it sure fits a lot nicer as far as that Torx fits. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot here and see how it goes. I just took a chunk out of the bolt, but it didn't even come close to loosening it. And I hit it very hard. <sighs> Another set of fun bolts to take loose. These are always just a total nightmare to get out here. All right, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to. I'm going to heat up things. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing apart. Uh, I'm going to take this guy off, and I'm going to heat up this flange in hopes to loosen up the Loctite a little bit, because otherwise I'm just going to sit here and fight it for way too long and possibly strip things out, and that's the last thing I want to do. Typically, these things come off of here a little bit easier. Uh, it's definitely not coming off easy on this particular vehicle, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to add a little weight behind this, and then hit on this, and I should be able to get it out of there. Yeah, this one was a little bit rusted, so that's why it gave me so much trouble. You know, I'm actually not going to heat those up yet. I'm going to try something first. Maybe I've been taking an approach to this all wrong this whole time. If I take these bolts out first, then I can get at these a lot easier. Sure it comes out of the aluminum a lot easier. Alright, I'm going to take this guy off of here. All right, so after a lot of fighting with this drive shaft scenario with these bolts here, uh, this is actually the toughest one I've ever had. I, I've always been able to get them from this side, and this one I can't even get it with being straight on without any kind of crazy adapters or anything, really. So I decided, that, you know, I'm going to try this, and sure enough, the input and output are the same. So the big issue, I believe, is the fact of the weight. So there wasn't enough weight. When I'm hitting that impact on there, it was just absorbing all the vibration, not only the rubber itself, but the fact that my hand could not hold and it was just making my hand jar. So by putting this on here, I believe this will add enough weight to it that the momentum of the impact gun will do a lot more work. So I'm going to go ahead and try it this way and hopefully it will actually let go this time. Wow! That was way, way tighter than I anticipated. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the tightest one I've had thus far. Obviously, you saw I busted my bit. There's a piece of it here. And that was a snappy bit, and I sheared it off. I got the other one. That one took it off, finally. I think what happened is I hit it enough with enough blows that the bolt maybe started to warm up a little bit or fatigue the block tight a little bit, enough so that it would let it go. But that is impressively tight. So this drag shaft now is going to be a spare part for me, basically, unless the customer wants to sell it, I guess. What we want are these pieces here. So I'm going to go ahead and separate this bearing off of here. Uh, there is this little collar, and don't be fooled, there is a lock ring. One of these snap ring things is underneath this collar. So you have to get this collar off. So here's the replacement collar. I'll set that aside. These are all the replacement bearings. Now you see there's one bearing here, there's a bearing here, and then there's another one. Here we go. And this guy here. So I got to take the snap ring out and pull this bearing out. Now this bearing was rusted to the shaft and also inside here there's a there's like a stop ring. Now this ring is a kind of a spring loaded ring so when you put this together you kind of have to hold it together in order to get the snap ring in place. Uh, so that's something else that you have to be aware of when you go to put this thing together. Now doing this can be done without a press but I highly recommend a press. Now you saw me separate these bearings without a press and you know it, it's definitely possible uh, and the other thing that you could do, you could get really creative, since there is a hole through here, you could get creative with bolts to pull everything in place. But this piece, honestly, you don't have to get creative like that, because you can set it on, for instance, a nice iron block or the floor or whatever, and just pound the bearings on with sockets. Uh, as far as this one goes, though, it is nice to have a press to get it off of there. But again, it's not fully necessary. I typically don't even use a press, but I just take my hammer and I do that. I just turn it, tap it, and just go until it finally falls off. But of course, first thing I have to do is take this guy out here. These things are not pressed on very tight. That's why I try to just avoid the press. It's just easier for me than trying to find all the adapters to make it work. I'm going to go ahead, grab my screwdriver, wherever it is, take this guy and shove it down in here and pry up on this little flange, working it around just like if you had a paint can. So there's that. Now we got the snap ring down here. 
probably going to need different players for that, but I'll try. Oh, this fits. Okay. So now we'll do it without the snap ring, or without the hydraulic press. I should be able to do it with this little brass hammer. Just, I'm, I'm only going to use this just to prove a point that this little hammer, it doesn't take much to get that off of there. In fact, you can even do it this way if you want. Although then it's going to take a little bit more hit. So there's that guy. So now we have all the bearings off. We need to get the replacement bearings. Now there's two different size boxes. These two are going to be for this because they're the same size. And then this guy here is the only one that's a different size. Now, if you like, you can take this and this guy and throw them in the freezer. And you can actually just freeze these things and it'll make life a little bit easier. But with that, you got to consider, okay, so this guy goes this way. So this one, you want to have this bearing in there first. And then this bearing on this side, you're going to push on after the fact. So it might not work as well for this. This one, though, it is helpful to freeze it. And then you can just take this bearing if it's slightly warm and drop it in place. It'll, it'll literally just fall on the place. But I'm not going to putz with that. I'm just going to go ahead and slowly put this thing on. I'm going to see if I can find a pickle fork that happens to fit because of how tall this is. Otherwise, I have to find a series of adapters to make it work. You know, I said I was going to find a pickle fork. And I opened a drawer and I found the giant crescent wrench. And I thought, I wonder if I could do it with that. Just put it like that and hit this with a hammer. So we're going to experiment quick. Hopefully this works out. I'm going to get a nice and level on the bearing surface. <laughs> I'll be damned. It worked. It's all the way on. A nice, easy shortcut for you. You can use an adjustable wrench to put bearings on that aren't pressed too tight. I'm not sure how comfortable I feel using that for this, but if I hold it flat enough and I hit it light, I think I might be okay and be able to get away with it. So feel for the flatness. I think it's on. Yep, it's all the way on. And it's not rubbing, it's not bent, everything looks good. Well, I just found a nice new technique for myself to use. Hopefully you guys can find that helpful. Alright, we need to remove this guy now. If that little tip was something interesting for you guys, be sure to hit that like button for me and leave a comment below so I'm aware of that being helpful. So that guy's out now. I can grab the new one. Something of noteworthy, uh, there is O-rings in here and they actually hold the bearing in place on the, these, this part. And I don't believe it's really press fit very much. That's why I was able to just take that socket and do that. I think it's just a really high precision fit, not necessarily a press fit. And the O-rings do more holding than anything. But you can see, I'm barely doing anything, and it popped right in there. So we got the bearing inside this housing, and we need to put a bearing on this one as well. So we're going to go ahead, get the bearing on there. Now, putting the bearing on here can be simplified with something like this. Uh, I could have did this for the other thing too, but it's a little bit too long, I believe. Well, actually, no, that would have worked. So two different ways, I guess. You can use a crescent wrench if you're really out of options, or a bench vise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this thing down here. Then take and hit this. Once you have that on, then you can take the snap ring and put it in place. So once you have the snap ring into place, then you can use this again to put this in here. Slides in nice and easy. Now we can put the other snap ring on this side. Now, don't be afraid to take this guy and set it against the snap ring there. There we go. So now we have nice new bearings in there. Now for some of the last steps, which are find the correct end of the drive shaft. So we have this end has a hole in it. And this end has a knob sticking out here, which is a little bit damaged. That's kind of concerning. So I'm not sure what happened to this thing. I'm pretty confident it hasn't been dropped. I know I didn't drop it, but uh, there's a little mangled spot here, and it's not letting it go on easy. So I'm just going to take this little file and just clean it up. Just a real small amount. Like somebody was carrying it across the shop and 
set it down, but set it down maybe a little bit harsh or something. So this guy goes on this end here. There we go. Now these things are way too long, so they should have included bolts. This guy here sits in this, just like so. Okay, so here's the factory bolts. Here is the aftermarket bolt. You can see it's significantly shorter for obvious reasons. So we're gonna go ahead and get these guys in. Uh, I'm gonna be using red Loctite, not blue, because now at least it can be heated up. Whereas before this rubber, you'd probably wreck the rubber if you were to heat it too hot. So now it can at least be heated up hot enough to actually take effect and, and loosen up the, the Loctite if somebody were to need to release it. Uh, another thing, I'm gonna have to go get an Allen wrench. If I remember correctly, when you do this, you can't get a Allen socket in here. You actually have to take the socket head off of the Allen and then just use the Allen with like a ratchet wrench. So you can see what I did there. I just took the part that holds the Allen and I punched it out of there with a the punch. And now I'm just gonna take that guy and hook this little ratchet wrench up to it and use that to tighten everything down. Now obviously I'm not going to really be able to torque this down to an actual torque spec. So the best way to do this, to make sure that you can get it tight enough, obviously the red Loctite is there for a reason, but is to use a presser wrench like this, adjustable wrench, wrench, and then the others on this end, that way you can get enough torque on there to know that you have it tight enough. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and slide it back in, put the huge snap ring back in, and don't forget to make sure you put it in the right direction. There we go, I'll give you guys a little bit better view. Now this is probably the toughest part of this whole ordeal, is getting this darn snap ring back in. And I'm making it even tougher by putting the camera in my way, but... That's gonna have to wait until... Yeah. You guys, you guys can't see that. You're in my way. Sorry.